Are you struggling to tell between SN2, E2, SN1, and E1? I totally get it. I was really struggling with this for a long time, so I ended up making this chart. Ever since I've used this, it's been so much easier to tell. First, I look at the nucleophile. If the nucleophile is strong, generally that means it's negative, it's gonna favor twos, so either SN2 or E2. Once you know that it's gonna favor a two, if your substrate is a primary leaving group or if your nucleophile is narrow, it's gonna favor SN2. If you have a tertiary leaving group for your substrate or if you have a bulky nucleophile or if there's heat, it's gonna favor E2. It can get a little dicey when you have a secondary. Secondary can favor either SN2 or E2. Now, I don't really wanna get into this. I can make another video, but one thing you can consider is the basicity, which is different from the nucleophilicity. But usually I can tell based on narrow, primary, tertiary, bulky, and heat. So I wouldn't worry too much about this yet. Now, if your nucleophile is weak, which generally means neutral, it's going to favor a one reaction, either SN1 or E1. SN1 and E1 are tricky because they both start with the same first step. The carbocation is formed when the leaving group leaves. So they're both favored by secondary and tertiary substrates with secondary tertiary leaving groups. Mostly you just have to look at the narrowness of the nucleophile or if it's bulky with heat. If it's bulky with heat, it favors E1. If it's narrow, it favors SN1, but usually you're gonna get a mixture because these two are so closely related. And hopefully that will help solve the problems with SN1, SN2, E1, and E2. Like and follow for more and check out my YouTube channel where I actually put this into action with real practice problems. I uploaded a new video today.